Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. We are back up at the plot. Let's just have a very quick little spin round and the sun is out. It's an absolute corker of a day. And I'll just spin round so I'm not squinting so the sun's in my eyes. It's beautiful, the birds are singing, the sky is blue. There's not a cloud in the sky. And for the last three weeks, it has been absolutely horrible up here. Anyway, I've got a job to do today that I've been waiting to do for ages. And if I just spin you around quickly, let's pop you over here. We've got two apple trees over here that I picked up from Tesco. So you can, you can see there on the label, it's two for £12 if you've got a club card, or if you don't, it's two for £14. And the varieties we've got, that one there is Jonah Gold, and that one there is Cox's Orange Pippin. And I thought I would do this video because there's lots of these about at the moment. So, you know, your, your B&Ms, your Asdas, your, your Tesco's, any, any, anywhere like that. There's loads of these fruit trees about. So it's pretty much the same technique for all of them. And I've got a little bit of a, a, a tip later on for doing the roots and things like that. So be sure to watch watch through and, and sort of see that bit because that's that's an important bit a little tip so i'll take you through how i'm going to do this and i'll show you where i'm going to do it if we spin this round apologies for the sun coming across the screen so i've got this little bit of the pl plot here right at the very top and over here is where the raspberries grow and you can see them there they're a little bit of a, a state at the moment and this this bit here is where we had the the sweet corn and and the butternut squash i think it was last year all grown in here but it's a little bit unloved so i'm going to do something with it so where we've got the palette colours here, this path, this is where the, the black weed fabric is going to come all the way up here. That'll be a path. This area here, there's going to be two, the two apple trees. I've also got a new gooseberry bush and a blackberry bush that's going to go in there. And any of the sort of stragglers of the raspberries that have self-seeded and they're, they're making their way out sort of over here away from the fence, they're going to get dug up and they're going to get pushed back over there. Cardboard down, I've got loads of wood chips, so over there in those in those compost bags up against the fence they're all full of wood chips might need to do a second run there might not be enough to do all of this but that's the plan cardboard down wood chip down protect the trees look after them stake them all that good stuff which i'll take you through in a moment so what i'll do now i'll get you set up on the tripod i'll get all my bits and pieces set up and i'll take you through how we're going to plant these trees out how it's going to look and all the different bits and pieces we're going to be doing back with you in just a jiffy Right, so I've sort of been busy doing this first bit while you've not been here off camera and all I've been doing is digging a hole. There's one here and one over there that you might not be able to see but I didn't think you'd be too interested in me digging a hole but what I will say about the hole is it doesn't need to be a massive giant hole for a tree. You think you're going to have big trees? They don't need to be giant holes. This hole's maybe it's about a foot cubed so it's a foot, a foot long, a foot in width and about a foot deep. Around about the size of the shovel. There you go around about that sort of size. And one thing to quickly mention about the trees is I've taken them out of the packaging just now. And let me show you this. So this one's been unpacked and you can see all the sort of beautiful roots on the bottom there, which is absolutely lovely. I'll just put it down there gently. But this is how they look when you take all the outer packaging off, you'll find around the roots, you've got this, and I can only describe this as really, really tightly bound sort of cling film kind of material. And it's done, try and keep the roots moist while they're in the shops, might not sell straight away. So they need to keep the trees alive so they all get bound up. So one thing to be very, very careful with is taking this off. If you come down here with a knife or scissors or anything like that, you're in danger of cutting through the roots because all the roots are sort of bound up inside there. So please take your time with this bit, unpick a little bit of it, slowly unravel it. Yes, it's a pain, yes, it takes its time but it's much better in the long run because the tree's going to survive because you're not going to break the roots. Anyway, lecture over. I'll get another couple of things set up over here. So I'm going to put the stake in, we're going to put the compost in, and I'm going to show you these, these two really important things about planting it out to do with the roots and the root stock, and we'll show you how that looks. Back with you in just a jiffy. Right, so because these are young trees and we all know it gets windy. I mean, the last few weeks, last three weeks up here, what have you had four different storms? And it's been absolutely horrendous. So they need to be staked to begin with. This is just a plastic stake. This came from b and It probably costs about three or four quid, not much. You get wooden ones, you get all sorts of different weird and wonderful ones. They're much of a muchness, as long as they do the job. So I'm just gonna push that in to begin with. And I've got a nice heavy sort of lump hammer here. And we're just gonna give that a good whack into the ground, maybe it's just a wee bit more, just to make sure 
it is nice and deep because after all we want this to support the tree when it's windy let's just keep going get that in i think that's probably good enough i mean that's at least 18 inches i would say into the ground there so that's in so that's the stake in the ground it's probably a good or at least 18 inches i would say into the ground there so it's absolutely rock solid that's not going anywhere so if i just lean over here grab my knife next stage is i've got some multi-purpose compost nothing fancy again this is like three bags from from b m for, for 12 quid and it's just it's got enough nutrition in just for the the start of the tree's life there and i'm always very careful to open my compost bags and things like that at the end because i reuse these for loads of stuff and you'll see later when i bring the wood chips from over there and we get all this finished off and that's all old compost bags that the wood chips are in these are absolutely brilliant for lining palette collars anything like that because they're designed to to not let things get wet you know it's plastic it's designed to to be on soil and on compost it's absolutely brilliant and i'll tell you what i'll do because i'm going to do this little technique with the compost i'm going to bring you over here and we'll get you set right up right over here so you can see what i'm doing with the compost and putting it in and things like that and you can see much better than you can from over there back with you when i've just set this up in a jiffy right i'm back and down to my honkers for this bit so let's scoop some of this compost in here to begin with right i want a nice decent sort of pile in there and what i'm going to do with the compost is i'm going to compress it into a sort of mound sort of pyramid shape right so it's just going to be quite it's going to be quite firm but i'm going to make a lump a sort of pyramid a mound whatever you want to call it dome anything like that in the bottom of the hole there and the reason for that is if i grab this tree what i don't want to do is pop that in there and all those roots get squashed up so the idea is that you see we've got them coming out here coming out here if we pop that on top of the mound it's going to spread those ones out over that side so what i'm going to do let's just have a look at this i'm actually going to put it that way because then that's better for the stake but let me just spread the the roots out over the top of that mound like that and that's going to stop them clumping up into a big ball which we don't want we want them to spread out we want them to start making their way all over here underground and whatnot and getting all that nutrients and all that good stuff and something else important that i mentioned before is we've got a little notch on the tree here and what that is this is the actual tree the actual variety of tree we're going and this down here is the root stock so that's two different trees that have been grafted together there's lots of different reasons for that i'll not go into them but what you don't want to do is bury a tree deeper than the graft so i've got a good couple of inches there where the graft is so i'm going to backfill this hole with all this lovely compost and again that's going to be when it rains and all that sort of stuff it's just going to give the the tree a good start in life because there's lots more nutrients in this compost than there is in the ground itself and if i let that go i'm just gonna push it that way a little bit I'm looking good and we'll firm that up then what i will do in a second is we'll move that out of the way and we'll get my big size tens in here to give all this a good firming down there we go so that's essentially the tree in like i say we did that little mound at the bottom little dome little mound sort of thing to get all those roots spread out put the tree in backfill the hole with compost we've got the stake here and that's it pretty much done what i'm going to do is i'll rinse and repeat with the other tree and then i'll come back to you we'll show you how we're going to join these two together and then we'll show you about putting the wood chips down how we're going to look after the tree because i need to put something around the base and that's a little bit different so i'll be back within a jiffy when i put the other one done and we'll show you how we're going to finish this off back with you soon so we're not too far off being finished now first thing i'm going to do is just put some of this 
black weed fabric directly around the base there because we don't want any weeds coming up over the bottom of the tree. That's an absolute no-no. And the second thing I've got some of this, you'll have to excuse me because I've got the sun behind the camera right in my eyes, but it's better for you guys being there sort of looking over this way. I've got some of this Velcro tree fastening sort of stuff and I'm just gonna get enough so we'll double that and we'll go again. Cut some of that off and this is gonna go around here and around the tree nice and not too tight but you know tight enough so that on a windy day it's not going to go anywhere that just wraps around simple and as easy as that and again I'm going to go over there I'll do the same with the other tree but I'll not bore you with that bit and we'll come back and we'll get things like this weighted down and we'll get the cardboard out and I'll show you what it's all going to look like at the end there back with you in a few minutes so we're not too far off being finished here. We've got our two trees, one, two, our stakes attached with a bit of Velcro, sort of wrap tree thing, weed fabric around the base, cardboard in between. I mentioned earlier, I've got a couple of little fruit bushes to put in. So we've got a little gooseberry poke up there in between, and you won't be able to see it on camera, but over there we've got some, uh, some blackberries as well to go in, and then all the raspberries around the edge. I mean, it still needs a bit of tidying up over there. But you can see we've got the cardboard down here and the weed fabric down here. There's two different reasons for that. They're all going to have wood chips put on them, but underneath the weed fabric, that's going to be a permanent path. All around here, the cardboard's going to suppress the reeds in the short term to get rid of them. It'll slowly rot away, and the wood chips are going to mulch down and put loads of goodness into the soil around here and feed these little trees for a long time to come. And I'm very, very fortunate around here that we get free wood chips. There's a big, a big pile of them over the other side there that a local tree surgeon bring, brings along. So I build all the paths out of them and you can scoop them up, make compost out of them and all sorts of good stuff. But I mentioned before about old compost bags and stuff, but here's an example. Full of wood chips. Off it goes. And these are just going to get spread all the way around here, over the path, over the cardboard and hopefully it'll look 10 times better than this when it's finished. I don't think I've got enough here to do the whole lot today. It's going to take another trip, but what I'll do, I'll finish off doing all of this and I'll come over there, I'll grab the camera and we'll give you a quick squiz around by hand so you can see how it all looks at the end there. Back with you in a moment. Right, so I'm back. Let's give you a spin around and a quick handheld tour. So this is the the area here, you might remember it at the start, it all looked horrible, messy, grassy, we'd had different things growing here throughout the year, but we've got a bit of a permanent solution to this area, so what'll happen right up here, right up till we come to this path, we'll get more cardboard up here, more of the black weed fabric up this bit, so we've got our permanent path there, and in and about here, let's have a look at the trees again, we've got the stake, we've got the tree, buried up to the rootstock, not touching the rootstock, just above where it's sort of being grafted on there where the join is. Some of this sort of velcro -y stuff, I'll, I'll put a link to this in the video in the description below so you can see that if you want to see it, it was about a fiver off Amazon. They put a bit, of the, a bit higher up as well. So some up here, some down there. So when it gets windy, that's not going to go anywhere. These were just a couple of quid from B&M, the, the plastic stakes there. So you see down here where we've got the cardboard which are different types of wood chips, just whatever's there I pick up and use. We've got a little gooseberry bush here, blown, uh, growing away, blowing away. It might blow in the wind, you never know. We've got our other tree here again, one joined at the top, joined at the bottom, and some wood chips. And we've got our blackberry here that's going to grow. And I need to finish this bit off round here with some more wood chips and whatnot that's going on. Anyway, if you do want to see me have all this finished, by all means consider giving the channel a like and subscribe to see what's going on. Let's just spin the camera around. This is how we're looking today, looking nice and sunny. Lots of stuff going on there. I think in the next week or so, I'm going to try and get up here and do a, do a plot tour. Because I think it'd be good to do one. I don't do many of them, but I think if I do one now, sort of start of end of February, start of March, get one done, you can see what it looks like now. And then see if I do one another two months time, once stuff's been planted out and it's been transformed a little bit, you'll see what it looks like then. But please consider giving us a subscribe. You click the button below, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything. If you like what we've done here with the trees and the bushes and the wood chips and everything else, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Let me know if you have fruit trees. If you've got fruit trees from anywhere, there's loads about at this time of year. Like I say, they're dead cheap if you don't go for the ones from the specialist growers. I reckon I've probably spent 
20 quid in total putting those two trees in with the the little bit of weed fabric the the velcro straps the stakes and one bag of compost i reckon 20 quid all in for those two apple trees and we'll see sort of september october time if any apples have actually grown anyway that's enough of me waffling on to today i will be back for the next one thank you very much for watching and bye for now folks